Welcome to Breaking Barriers. You know your path. We know the obstacles. And we can teach you how to tear them down. And now your host, CEO and founder of Adapting Social, John Vigero. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Breaking Barriers. This is going to be a tasty one. I have the Pizza King right here with me right now. Yeah, I'm stoked. Dude, John, thank you so much for being here with me, brother. I appreciate you. Of course, um, man. So my man, John, over here, you know, number one, you know, you're you're crushing it at the pizza game. Yeah. And it's funny because I actually I was at your pizzeria the other day, and I'm like, damn, I'm staring. I'm like, how do I know this guy? And then before you know it, we, I figured out that at PJ's, I used to go there and you were at PJ's. Yes, as a young kid. So that's what was cool about it was – you already know a little bit of history about me, right. right? Like you started, or when I, I started literally in, like the, in this industry, yeah, like growing up in this industry. Right. Um, and I don't know, you know, during the years that you were there, but I remember like early 90s, if you walked through there, you would see like pictures on the wall of me and my brother like stirring sauce as babies. Oh, I love it. That's how crazy That's it was. how, wow. Yes, that's how, that's how, you know, young we were in there. Um, the sauce is in your blood. Yeah, it's in, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it went from, it literally went from, uh, working, you know, all those years in the pizzeria with them, um, to me eventually transitioning out and, and, you know, having to grow and go do my own thing. Right. Um, so like in the, in the, you know, my first store I got, uh, was in Ocean Township. Mm -hmm. Um, we grinded that out over there. Uh, we sold that. I got out of the business for a little bit. Um, and basically dude, like I, I feel like I, uh. I expanded, right? I, I you went prior, corporate for a little bit, right? Yeah. So, so really, what happened was when I was growing up in the industry with my dad, I was basically learning all. Of, I would say, you know, cooking all, you know, all the culinary end of it. Um, when I branched out and went and did my own thing, uh, that's when we got a real taste, or for at least for myself, I got a real taste of the business aspect, right? All the back of the house, all. Um, you know, the finances, everything else that goes in it. And it was crazy. During that time, I actually got discouraged, dude. Mm. Um, it went from what the was love, it? What was it went from the love of creating right. um, to now it's like there's finances involved, right? And it's got to earn money and it's got to, you know, everything like that. So it's like, it was like, wow, you know, th th there's more to it than just the cooking, right? There's, there's the financial aspect of it, right? The thing's got to produce money. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like probably the biggest struggle for me then was understanding how the finances worked about it. Like uh, what made the bit. So, so before it was, let me, let me try to understand that. Right. So unpacking that. So before it was like, okay, boom, this is awesome. Like, you know, I'm making pizza. People are coming in, you're meeting new people. Yeah. You got a right? good team. Yeah. And then it's like, wait a second, we got to keep the lights on. Exactly. <laughs> I There's need more, more I need more dough. Exactly. Um, you know, staffing, right? Making mm -hmm. sure we have the right staff, uh, things like that. Um, and dude, I was working seven days a week. I really was hustling hard. Um, right. And dude, during those times, I, I, I want to say like, you know, you, you're, you're trying to, um, you know, stay focused, right? You're on your grind. Um, you're, you're head down, to, getting after it. Yeah, dude. Right. You're trying to keep in positive mind space. Right. Because right? it's very easy to I want to say lose track of that and, 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 you know, say, what am I doing this for and all that, you know what I'm saying? And, right. and it's very hard when you're in the trenches. Yes. And that's real. Um, the seven day week grind is when you're in the trenches. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that's basically part of growing though, right? You need to experience that to get to that next level. Right. Um, and like I said, I backed out of it. I sold, I sold that business. Uh, I got into the corporate world. I was in finance for a little bit. Um, I met, excellent group of guys smart individuals um but just great businessmen right um the one thing that stuck with me their 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 uh ambition to keep going right like you know uh, we were working for a financial firm at finance right you, you know you can't use certain wording with things and oh dude compliance is nuts exactly right um and here's like a group of guys sitting around a table all you know successful brilliant um and they're literally sitting there in the team, figuring out what's the proper wording that we can use to get our objective across Forward, the table. Yeah. Right. And I love that. Like that stuck to me. It was like, bro, look how they all just 
helped each other, you know what I'm saying? Like all did this together. Right. Um, and again, getting the, the understanding of how finances work and how money works and how money moves and things like that and using leverage and everything like that, um, it was time to get back into it. Mm. So I actually uh, bought Carlos Pizza, which is in, um, in technically considered English town. Um, and then use, use the, the, use leverage, use everything that I basically learned in that financial industry. Um, but not only that, but the, the, the traits, the, the, um, the discipline, everything that they use, like watching how, like, you know, their grind, their daily grind, um, even for them, like I said, successful people, uh, but still putting in 13, 14 hour days. Right. You know what I'm saying? And people think, you know, it's, you know, again, I want to make that money and, and have more time yeah. off, dude. And bro, it's literally a grind. Yeah. It's literally a grind. Um, it's no joke. And I think one of the things though, too, just to unpack what my man John's saying right now, we got John Squared here on the podcast. Yeah. So, but one of the things that my guy John's saying right now that I want to kind of unpack for everybody is that like, you know, there, there are so many different elements to, running or well let's just call it owning a business, business right yeah people like to people like to throw out like oh i'm a ceo or i'm yeah. starting a company and i'm doing this and that's all fine and dandy but like once you start to actually have to you know pay bills you know pay people you know put out a good product still you know yep. get out there in front of the right people and build your business yep there's so many different Did hats you, there's so many different things but yes. one thing that you said very well that i want everyone to kind of like listen and really hear is that when you're looking at it from the perspective, I like to, if you're, because you were in the finance, you ever hear of Ray Dalio? No. So you should. So anybody who, who hasn't, he has a book called Principles, right? Okay. So Ray, Dal Ray, Ray Dalio, to my knowledge, is one of the most successful um, financial traders of all time. Gotcha. Right? And so long story short, in his book, he talks about how the people you put yourself around when you're in business and making moves yeah um predicates what happens right so you mentioned 100%. like you get together you're talking about how you could say things right yep 100 um but he gives this good example right so like if you and i for instance if you and i were going to you know go summit uh mount everest right there's a lot of things that can go wrong right we can we can fucking lose oxygen uh if we're going too fast and out of breath we can get uh, we can get a uh, frostbite you know, we can fall, there can be an avalanche. There's so many different elements that yep. can happen where people die, right? Yep. So what they're, at Mount Everest specifically, there's these things called Sherpas, right? And what okay. a Sherpa is, is there's somebody who's almost like staff that is there to be your like mountain tour guide. Okay. They've been up that mountain a thousand times. So they're there to make sure you don't get frostbite. You don't fucking wake up dead. Yep. <laughs> you don't get anything, and nothing's gonna happen to you, right? Yeah. When, so what I'm trying to get at is when you have the right team around you and you have that Sherpa, right? Somebody who's been there before. Yeah. In principles, that's what they talk about with Ray Dalio, where it's like the team around you is either going to showcase, you know, how to get up that mountain or is going to kind of hurt, you know, it could hurt yes, you, right? Yes, 100%. So there's a lot to be learned from people who've experienced what, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to do out there, right? So super, super important. I love that you said that I want to unpack that whole team camaraderie component, but you know, one of the things I want to ask you though, too, so there are so many, I know, um, you know, people out there that watch Barstool Sports yeah. and like look at Dave Portnoy going to review pizzerias and do all those other things and pizza's kind of becoming a lot more popular, right? In terms of just like the way it looks to be a pizzeria yeah. owner. Yeah. It's a little more sexy than probably it ever has been, right? Because yes. of the industry. Yeah. Do you find that that situation <laughs> though for you has like are you like for instance would, would you want to be on like would you want to have somebody like that come review your place or is it kind of like not looking for that attention like what's your because I'm, I'm i'm curious what, no, dude. what pizza owners think about that yeah of course right um of course everybody wants the publicity right, right? And, and, and and well i know i know a couple people who are like good places that like don't they're like i don't want i don't want him to come here and like shit on our pizzeria because right now it's like people like it. listen dude you could say Again, you want to come shit on the pizzeria, whatever the case may be. Right. Again, I get going back to that old saying, right? What is it? Like, bad, bad press is better than no press, right. right? Like, to me, it's the exposure, right? Totally. Um, to me, the feedback, right? Uh, you know, gives me insight of how I can go and make it better, right? right. He might not be giving me the key to what that is, but you know, it know it, it it shows me that I need to do some work. Right. Um. That's one thing I gotta say that I do love, right? Honest feedback, true yeah. feedback. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because as a business owner, you need that to, to keep innovating and, and, and making it better and keep, you know, I, I want to say it's like you're always creating in some type of way. Right. You me, um, you mentioned all the hats you wear as owning a, a, a business, right? right? Um, that's, again, and finding the help, right, to alleviate those hats, right? Now you can wear the hat, right? right and you're doing right, this now. Right. Bro, that's, that's a, a huge struggle. Um, and, and what I've seen as I, I've grown through, you know, my years, um, just finding right people, right? Finding, again, the, the people to work inside your business, the friends to associate yourself around because that has a lot to do with it as well, right? Finding a, a good support system. Right. Um, dude, but to me, it's like if you have that dream, if you have that that ambition, that goal, that whatever, you're going to do it. Yeah, you just, just got to keep working on yourself. So, so what I love. So, one of my uh, one of my former clients from forever ago, he gave me this good saying where he was like, "When your when your why is big enough, you'll always figure out how." Right. And the example he gave me, which is so critical to understanding that, was he goes, "I'm gonna put you in that position, right? Let's just say, you know, who's the most important person in your life right now." I would, <laughs> right say my, I would say my mother. Okay, right. How, <laughs> my mother, so, my brother. So, so, let's say, so let's say it's it's either Ma or it's the brother, right? Yeah. So if if we're sitting here in the scenario, right, where you you come into you come into you know your house and you see, holy shit, my mom my mom's hanging off of uh, the side of the roof. Yeah. Right. Are you gonna go up there and try to save her, or are you gonna try to figure it out on the floor how you're gonna catch her? You're most likely you're gonna go run up there and try to figure this shit out, yeah. right? And then to even give another extreme example, he said, listen, he goes, if, if your mom, he gave me that example, but he said the Freedom Tower. <laughs> he goes, if your mom's hanging off the Freedom Tower, he goes, are you going to wait and figure shit out? Or are you just going to go out there and try to do everything you can to help her? 100%, yeah. right? But when your why is big enough, the how doesn't matter. You're going to figure it out, right? Yeah. So I think that that's the biggest thing is like, once you have that why, why am I doing what I'm doing every day? Why am I stressing? Why, like, like these things that go on in everybody's day-to-day lives of the grind in the trenches, if your why is big enough, yeah. all that shit don't matter. Meaning, yeah. like, you'll get past it, right? 100%. 100%. Um, what's your why? Dude, that's a good question. I'm looking for freedom, bro. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Um, like I said, for me, I, I constantly do work on myself, dude. Mm-hmm. I constantly am trying to grow mentally, constantly, um, you know, uh, listening to podcasts, uh, reading, you know, certain books, um, depending on, on what, what's my, you know, issue or what's my, you know, thing that I'm trying to, um, overcome. Right. Right. And then, and then who you're seeking those resources from, right. Mm -hmm. Are they somebody that's got what you're trying to obtain? Right. Right. Are they going to give you something incredible? Right. Um, so yeah, like I said, I, I I would say it's more my freedom in the sense of time or money. Bro, a little bit of both. A little bit of both. This, this, this. I'm going to say my industry, but I, I got to say, I'm sure it's everybody that's in business. Like, dude, <laughs> right. yeah, w- w- you know. You want both. Yeah. Right. Again, we, we all want, you know, money to survive or whatever. And everybody's limit of what that is, is everybody's own thing. Right. Um, but to me, it's like, if I can, you know, literally um, be done with, I don't want to say it's the grind. The grind I love. It's the, <laughs> it's the. Having to f- having to go back to um... I don't know what this guy's doing. I don't think. Listen, so so let me clarify something. Let me jump. Let me jump in on this thought go ahead, here. Go ahead. So I think you know what the difference is though. Is maybe that, you like, can put it in better words than me. Yeah. So I so <laughs> so listen. So I think you know one of the things that you start I'm to realize. Shy. No, it's good, man. It's good. It's it's you're being real, right? So that's that's all that matters. But one of the biggest things, that, like when I speak to different people, that. I would equate to successful, whether that's through financial measure or charitable measure. You know, there, there are people who are super successful that are just in, you know, nonprofits, right? Like saving lives, helping people every single day. Yeah. That's success, right? Yes. It depends. Obviously, beauty is at the eye of the beholder. But I think one of the biggest things when I speak to people who are successful, whether it's a pizzeria person or whatever, you know, like one of my, I'm going to give a quick shout out to Frederico's Pizza and Brick. Um, Freddie, I've known Freddie for a long time. I'm sure you know Freddie yeah. from the industry. Yeah, down the street. Yeah. yeah. So, but like one of the things with Freddie is like, you know, he's opened a bunch of, you know, successful pizzerias, right? Yeah. He sold some, sold this, did that, whatever. But the cool part though is, is like, you'll see him in the pizzeria a couple of days a week. He's not there every day now. Yeah. But like, he wants to be there, right? 
he doesn't have to be. Yeah. He wants to be to keep to keep his time, you know, pass by time, go see people, do his thing. He doesn't need to be in the pizzeria anymore. Yeah. So I think when you look at that, what changes I think as you get older when you're doing the right thing is like it's not about the hustle anymore, right? When you hit a certain point in your career, yeah, it's like cool because like I, I always, you know, tell my team, like if you ask any of my team members, I was always like, hustle, hustle, like no sleep, die, sleep when you're dead, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I got older, I got I married, th- I think that that's and it the changes. that I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. reaching for. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. Again, I'm still on that, you know, what's next? What's going? What are yeah. we doing? How right. are we moving? How right. are we, you know what I'm saying? How are we right. keeping pushing this up the mountain, right? Right. Um, for me, stagnant is, is, you know, not fun, right? I, I'm sure right. there are a lot of people. Thought no. Um, what, are, what are some of the things, so, so what are some of the things that you're working on right now? So right now, top actually, of mind like that. You're yeah. Like, so, boom. so, so that's what I was trying to get with this. Um, right now I'm actually working on a ghost kitchen concept. I, I, I you, when you actually came to visit, we were, came sitting, visit. Yep. you were sitting uh, back there in that little, uh, ghost kitchen. Um, but what led to that again, it was p- part of the story, right? Like as, as, as you started wearing all these hats and all these things that we were talking about, dude, it's like. It's crazy, dude, mm-hmm. and you're and you're trying to find the right help, and you're trying to put the right people into uh, into into management and things like that, and to, to keep growing, to keep um, you know scaling, getting bigger, um, right? And what happened was when COVID happened, dude, um, there was like a switch in everything was just takeout, pickup, everything like that, and it was like it felt like an easier time. Right. It really did. It right. really did. Like there was no, you know, people were doing um, curbside, things like that. I was like, wow, this is cool. Like imagine having a shop just like this. Just you always. Know, exactly. <laughs> just always. And then it was like, then you were, ex- I was experiencing ha- um, just getting regular staff, right? Like counter help, phone people, delivery people. And you're running around. And again, people on the other side calling for their orders, right? Customers, they don't understand what you're going through on a daily basis. They no. don't, they, you know what I'm saying? They just want what they want because they're paying for yeah. it and that's that. Yeah, um, It's not their problem. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, dude, it, it, and you know, you're just, I, I was sitting there like, bro, this is nuts. So, uh, you know, I, again, obviously, you know, at, at night, right, you're, you're hanging out in bed or whatever, you're scrolling through your phone. Um, I was actually looking, um, I forget what I was looking at. And I came across this guy who's like said something in his, in his LinkedIn about ghost kitchen. I'm like, what the hell is a ghost kitchen? And I look up this concept and I'm like, wow, this is actually be great for my brother. That was like mm-hmm. the first thing. My brother's into culinary too, loves it. Um, you know, uh, I was like, bro, this would be perfect for my brother. He can get into it. It can't be a huge, you know, um, overhead, everything like that. Would, you know, he's married with kids. Uh, in this industry that's like so hard to accomplish totally (laughs) totally totally right so um so i'm like wow this would be perfect for my brother so i was speaking to my brother about it i'm like bro we'll set it up it'll be great Nah, i don't know if that's for me i don't know (laughs) if i want to do that and then i'm like all right whatever i put it like i I was just like whatever just put it on the shelf yeah and then but i always had this thing of owning like the this neapolitan style pizzeria right Mm -hmm. and i'm like I should just do my own little concept. Right. Um, so literally with the extra sp- space that we had at Carlos Pizza, I set up uh, in that back uh, area, I set up a little... Um, Which is beautiful, by the way. Thank you, dude. Yeah, yeah I set really up like nice. a little little you know Neapolitan bistro back there. We're calling it Bari uh, Neapolitan Bistro. Um, I set that up back there. Bro, it literally... What I've designed literally simplified... Um, and it's not what I design it. Like I said, it's a ghost kitchen. It's out there. They exist. If I can design, if I can develop this brand to take off, right? That's where I, I see myself growing, right? Um, again, it's a small concept. It doesn't allow, uh, It doesn't afford a lot of overhead. Um, doesn't need a lot of staff, right? Um, and my idea would see somebody who wants to actually, you know, open their own. And be in there and don't and run their own kitchen and do that for themselves. Right. And hopefully, you know, if I can develop the brand where these things are sustainable for an individual, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, whether it's a chef himself that wants right. to go and open up and do these little shops, um, that, that's really my goal. That's where I'm trying to take that to. That's cool. Yeah, dude, I'm excited for it. That's um, very cool. 
And so, so that's awesome. I'm excited. And obviously, towards the end, we're gonna plug that. So we're gonna tell everybody where they can find you. You know, cool. where's Carlos? Yeah, at. dude. And I'm stoked on that though. Obviously, I tried that pizza and that back crazy oven. I made it pizza got, like five I seconds. You guys some, oh, you're right. the man, dude. You're too, you're too good to me. But so, tell me a little bit about like f- yeah. so for in your personal development, right? Yeah. So what 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 are what is something you're working on right now for your personal development? You mentioned things that you know, bro. Personal development. Um, it's funny because I, I'm a big Grant Cardone guy. I listen yep. to Grant Cardone like it's yep. my job, right? Yep. Uh, sprinkle a little Gary V in there, right? Yep. Um, I want to say there's one thing that Grant Cardone says, right? It's like you gotta you gotta pull the trigger. Um, we can talk about you know I can listen to all the podcasts I want. You can read all you know, but so it's true, actually though. doing the investing, right? Correct. And I think when we first met, I sort of you know touched up about about this. I wanted I was trying to pick your brain about what you're doing. Um, and things like that as far as personal development. Um, but yeah, dude, my next thing that I want, I want to go out to one of these events, dude. I want to see oh, what like it's one like. Oh, like one of those I, Grant Cardone I, events. Whether it's Grant Cardone, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 But I, I, I really, that, that would be the next thing that I would want to go and do. Um, I did a Tony Robbins. Uh, obviously, like I told you when I was in, in, uh, in your um, ghost kitchen, that I did, I've, uh, I had uh, Grant on my podcast. So dope. So, which was cool. So I didn't do his I didn't do his 10x thing, but I did Tony Robbins and Tony Robbins dude was insane. I had somebody else tell me actually when I was younger again when I had my first store, um, bro. Like I said, I, I financially I was doing good. Yeah. Mentally I was trying to hang on. Totally. Totally. Um, mentally it was a lot. I was I was like I said I was 22 23 years old. It was a lot. No college um, experience. Same. Um, bro, and that's, by the way, that's why you sort of got into it a little bit. Yeah. And I connected with you on that. Right. Um, you know, to hear, hearing your story a a little bit and and like you like touched on it and I was like, okay, now I view you through a different lens because you can relate to some of the pains, right? Like nothing was handed to you. Yep. Um, you know, financial, you know, uh, times were rough, right? Like, so I, I was like, okay, cool. Like you. In, in my way, you earned my respect. I know, you know, like I was like, all right, like he can, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that. No, the things that you listen, I, I think that's, that's such a, I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I think that's the one thing that drew me to my industry, which was like, I get to like work with people like you, right? Have conversations with people like you and people out there who, you know, are grinding, they're getting after it. They have some sort of crazy story that attributes to why they started their business or why they had to make a move and. You know, there's so many different variations and so many people that have been through the fucking ringer and hell and back, right? Bro, and, and again, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how personal you want to get or whatever the thing is. Um, oh, we, we, we got to do this. Is, this is uh, my podcast is explicit. <laughs> the um, rating for it is explicit. You know, you're you're talking about your struggles, right? Yeah. And to to, to start off with zero. Yeah. Right or maybe even negative zero, yeah, right? Like, but to start definitely. off with zero, um, gives you so much strength, so much power. It really does. You can't, you can't, yep. you can't replicate that. You can't. Right. Um, and I think that's what, if I could, one thing, if I could stress, it's like, all again because you know the obstacles, right? right. Like you know there was shit that got in the way. There yep. was, you know, you thought it was going good, and then it took a nosedive here, right? right? Like, you know the bullshit, and they, again, everything was a learning experience. Right. Um, and that, to me, it's like, bro, if I can drive that home to people, it's like, when you get in those fucked up time frames of your mind, mm-hmm. right? Um, dude, it, there's another day. Right. Fight it. You know what I'm saying? Fight it. Whatever you got to do to get out of that, you know right. what I'm saying? And keep that that positive. And sometimes it lasts weeks, dude, right? Like dude, months, it right? Does, like, dude, it like, does, bro. I've been, I've been, so first off, I just want to, I want to acknowledge that because I think that when, <clears throat> so I think going back to square one and, and having nothing, right. Um, you know, there's this saying that like, you know, somebody who is essentially go, like has to, has to build for the family, for the, for, for the next couple of generations, they have a really hard life. Right. And they have so much. And by and, the way, like this is the freedom Right. You get that? Like right. that's, totally. and, and again, I don't know how to put that in words. And, and again, those who really know me know I'm not, I'm, right. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a good vocal person. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't, I'm not good at, 
you know, uh, public speaking. And yeah, not even that, but like, uh, like motivational communi- shit. Communicating well, I would say, like trying to get yeah. what I'm trying to. I truly mean out. Right. Uh, my girlfriend understands me. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely matters. Um, yeah, dude. But I think I think the thing though is is like you know people who go through hard times, you know, and and build themselves up and make easier times for their their kids or for the generations around them, then eventually make people who have to go through hard times again. And I think that like when you look at that, you know, it's like <clears throat> um, I'll never forget this. I was going. I was. Uh, I think it was like 2019. It was like 2018 going into 2019. I had like a crazy tough year. We had teams, you know, team members that were leaving. We had team members who were yeah. letting go. We had clients leaving. Yeah. We had like a bunch of shit going on at once. Yeah. And I remember just like, and that yeah. is like a blow to the chest. When oh, you're going through, dude, especially when huge. This is you, huge. right? Like, I get we're a team and whatever, right? But yeah. you know where you started, right? Totally, <laughs> like it's totally. Like, bro. So yeah, so that was for me. That was one of the more tough times. And I remember, you know, I remember one of the things too is like. There was there was certain times throughout that time period where it was like, damn, like, you know, when are, when are the waves gonna stop hitting me, right? Because you keep ducking, get up, yep. boom, boom. Yeah. And I will never forget this one. I was driving to the city, and I'm sitting here, and because you talked about, you know, there's always another day or tomorrow, or whatever. And I'm sitting here, and I'm going through like so much shit. I at the time, my anxiety is through the roof. Yeah. I'm fucking depressed as hell. I'm feeling depressed. I don't want to get out of bed sometimes. Yep. At this at this time. And I'm sitting there, I remember like something else happened. And I'm just like, oh, of course, another mm-hmm. thing. And boom, dude. And I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there, I was, I was in traffic. And this song comes on. It's that one song that's like the kid singing, but it's like, tomorrow, tomorrow is only a day away, right? So there's okay. that whole lyrics. I'm going to have Nicole plug this in here so for people who don't know yeah. what it is. But essentially what the song is saying is like, no matter what you're going through, tomorrow's always a fresh new day, no matter yeah. what, right? Um, and I, I heard that song. And I was like, damn, bro. I was like, you know, I needed to hear that. And that's how simple of a thing. Little, right? little thing. Exactly. And that you might know? be all you, you need. In that moment. Just get me, get me over that hump. That's that, that, you know? that's that little bump I needed. Yes. But I think yes. at, the, at the end of the day, though, you know, for, for everybody that's out, that's out there right now, listening in, wherever you are, gym, office, on a bus, wherever the hell you're going, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is when you're going through tough times, you got to keep pushing, right? Yep. You got to keep pushing. Um, that's the number one thing that separates, you know, again, when you look at just small businesses, right? Most small businesses, I think it's like 70 or 80% of small businesses fail in the first year. Um, and why is that? Because it gets really tough. Yep. Money gets tough. You know, when you have a job, you're used to security, right? Like you get a paycheck. If I work, I get a paycheck guarantee. And that's the other thing. You know, two different mindsets. Two totally different mindsets. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah. Um, and you, you, Again, me personally, I, I, I couldn't explain it. And so, you know, uh, it's just taking on it. I don't know. I don't even know how to put it in words. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's, and, and listen, I, two I, different mindsets I'm for like, sure. Though. Yeah. I'm like, I'm the John translator today. <laughs> Thank you. That's fine, dude. That's fine. <laughs> but you, no, because you're saying it and I kind of vibe with what you're saying already. I'm like an empath. So when I'm with somebody, like I just, it's weird. But, yep. but essentially what I think you're trying to say though, with, you know, without, with, and I agree with you without question, is the fact that like, you know, there, there 100% is two different mindsets, right? Number one, there's, you know, again, what you talked about working seven days a week, I'm sure pr- over 10, 15 hours a day sometimes. Yeah, easily. You know, easily, right? Whereas like in a normal mindset, like that, fuck that, I'm not doing that. And that's you know? my point. You know, so it's, that's a, but it's just too different, you know, and, and that's fine though, right? Because again, without, without that mindset, you know, not everybody can be owners, right? So exactly. at the end of the day, it, it makes total sense. And as listen, we're getting close to the end here with our segment. Um, I do want us to, so um, now I like to look at legacy, right? <laughs> My man's sweating bullets right now. I am. I am. <laughs> so when I look at legacy, you got me right? on the spot. <laughs> when I look at legacy, right? <laughs> I look at, you know, the, the long-term game, obviously, what, what we want to leave behind on this planet from the time that John was here, right? Both Johns. So, I like to reverse engineer that whole thought process, right? Because a lot of times you're like, okay, boom, here's what, here's what I want to become. Here's what I want to leave on this planet, right? And the only thing that is actually going to be left on this planet for hundreds, if not thousands of years is your gravestone, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and on your gravestone, you know, most people have loving husband, this, that. Ooh, dude. So what, what would yours read given who you are today? Bro. And what would it be? 
I don't know what would be said on my grace home. <laughs> Why'd you do that? <laughs> Why'd you do that? What, what would you, by the way, we got some, before, while, he, while he's thinking of that, boom, we got some pizza ready to go here. Yeah, dude. Um, um, I don't think it's, bro, so, I don't know. I so don't here, know. So don't here's know. what I want you to think about. I don't know. Here's what I, I want I you to think about. I know that the, however, I, I don't know what I would put into words on there. Right. Right. Um, but I know that my legacy, like what up. The people who I did touch along my way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I want them to get the best version of me at all times. And it, it's when I'm gone, right? And again, this is everybody thing. I only want good things to be said about me. Um, as I move through my life, dude, it's, you know, I don't want to burn nobody. I don't want to, you know, I just want to be a, 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 a good human. I don't know, dude. I don't know. So so I mean, I don't know, so let's dude. unpack that. Let's know. unpack that. I like yeah. this. You so, put me on the spot too. Much, that's, that's it. Johnny on the spot. <laughs> dude, you're nuts. So all right, so let's unpack that, I right? Had, so I had I had I gotta prepare better for these if we're gonna do <laughs> if we're gonna do more of this. So all right, so listen, so so dude, essentially in that unpack, I think what you said was good because it was genuine. You could tell it was genuine, you felt it, it was real. I felt it, but I think the biggest thing is you gave it hundred percent to want, the people around you. I want to, like I said, dude. I just want to leave this earth that I did right. for, for for the people that know me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't want. Uh, I wouldn't want a bad thing to be said about me. Right. Um, again, I don't think I'm gonna be um, Mother Teresa. Exactly. But but but, but again, like wh whatever I do on this planet on Earth, I, d I just want to be known for being a good person here. Boom. You can't listen. <laughs> you don't have to rehearse that. Uh, you gotta yeah. rehearse that, dude. That was good. Well, so walk me through this. Go ahead. Right? So, so what are we doing we here? To, so these are all pre-made pies, I'm right? I'm putting my gum over here. They're obviously not hot now, but... No, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Basically, Boom, look at this thing. To, yeah, no, I look, look at, at this it, thing. Look I at drink. this thing. Um, so, they're all pre-made pies. Um, they're, it, the concept's called heat and eat, basically, right? You get it. Um, oh, they're not it's cut. It's chilled. No, they're not cut. Okay, not, so, you gotta, so it's self-cut. Boom. Self-cut. Okay. Heat it up on yourself. Basically, you order it. Um... We're utilizing uh, Grubhub and um, uh, what's the other company? Grubhub and DoorDash. Uber Eats or no? I'm not. I'm not going to be on Uber Eats uh, okay. right off the rip. Okay. Um, DoorDash, Grubhub. We're going to utilize that first. Um, and like I said, you, you basically this is how you're going to get the delivery on here. There's going to be instructions on the front of how how to heat it up. Six minutes in the oven, 450 degrees. Boom. And you're ready to go, bro. Dude, this looks. Pop open a bottle fire. of wine. <laughs> you're good. We're going to have a few appetizers fire. on the menu as well. We're going to show this again up here. Look at this thing. Oh, my God. It looks so good, dude. Holy shit. Okay, so we don't have a knife here in the studio, but we're going to get into this. Um, now, where so where can people engage with you? So, meaning, like, where can they, follow, yeah. where, where can they find you? So, so I'm not, social, website, social media, the whole thing. We're at um, Bari underscore Bistro. Okay. Um, we can plug Carlos, too, if you want to. Yeah. We have... Um, we have uh, a website that's going to be baribistro.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can find us on there. You can place your order right online there. You see pictures. Uh, hopefully, you get some videos up there as well. Um, but you can see the, you know, uh, the pies that we make. The, the, um, our prep is on there. Everything. Um, yeah. Cool. That's really it, dude. I love it, dude. You are the man. So one thing, <laughs> one, thing, one thing that I always tell everybody, dude, is you know, time is the one asset we don't get back. So you being here with us today, spending it, means the world to me, bro. You're the man. I appreciate you having me here, dude. Of course. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, this is my first one, so this was, first this of was many. good. First of many. <laughs> this was good. We had to get him ready on the camera, yeah, right? Exactly. So we had to get him exactly. ready. No, so I think good. it was a great starting point. Um, <laughs> oh, and everybody, again, create a great day. Give him a follow. Uh, check out Carlos Pizza. Yeah, Carlos Gourmet Pizza. <laughs> Gourmet Pizza. And then the, go, the, the Ghost, Ghost Kitchen, Kitchen is Bar Bari. At, yeah, at Bari Bistro. Boom. Go give him a follow. Thank check you. Check it dude. out. If you're in the English Town area, yeah. give him a check out. Corner I didn't realize that, that you were... So it's, We're on the corner of Route 9 and Union Hill Road. How far, how far are you from like where the swap meet things are? Oh, dude, we're not that far at all. It's pretty close. Yeah, they're... Because when, when I think English Town, that's the number one thing I think about. And you're not the only person that said that. Multiple people are like, oh, yeah, that's where they do the swap meet. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I didn't even know this Huge, thing goes on If you're here. a car yes. enthusiast and you go to English Town, yeah. you got to go to Carlos. Yep. You got to go to Carlos. Yep. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you're the man, you. John. Thank you.